Hello and welcome to this 28 minute video where I overhaul a mid 1950s French mechanical wristwatch. I will be completely disassembling the watch, cleaning the parts, reassembling everything afterwards, and finally oiling and regulating the timekeeping of the watch. This video isn't meant to be a tutorial, but rather is just a means for me to document my work, and because I thought I'd offer a bit of insight into the world of watchmaking, albeit not the professional world of watchmaking, because I didn't go to watchmaking school, and I am instead purely self-taught. And this is the watch itself. Uh, it's 33 millimeters, which may sound pretty small, but during the 1950s, this actually would have been a pretty average men's watch size. And I'll start the disassembly by removing the case back using a case back wrench. Uh, it just simply screws off. And after it's removed, we should be able to see the watch movement, that is to say the internals of the watch in a moment. Now, at the moment, the watch is actually running, but that doesn't mean that it doesn't need a service. And we can actually see looking at the outer edge of the case, there's quite a lot of dirt, which makes sense because this is a 70 something year old watch. And so here I am unscrewing the setting lever screw in order to take out the crown and stem, the crown being that little knob that you actually use to wind the watch and set the hands. And so with the crown and stem removed, we can actually flip the watch over and lift up the case and expose the dial. And so with the dial exposed, I'm actually going to go ahead and protect the dial with a small sheet of plastic while I remove the hands using a specialized watch hand removing tool. And so now I'm going to remove the seconds hand at the 6 o'clock sub-dial. Um, unfortunately, the hand removing tool is too big, so I have to use a screwdriver. This isn't the best practice, and there's usually a set of hand levers that you can use that's more appropriate, but unfortunately I don't have them. And so here I'm removing the dial by loosening two dial screws which hold the dial in place. And so off the dial comes, and we can see the dial side of the movement. But first, I'm going to do what's called letting down the mainspring, and that's basically taking away the power source of the watch. There's a large spring that's coiled inside the watch movement, and here I'm basically letting it uncoil in a controlled manner, um, letting the crown slip between my fingers so that when we disassemble the watch, the spring doesn't suddenly unwind and launch some parts everywhere. And here I'm unscrewing the balance cock screw, which holds down the balance assembly, which is more or less the heart of a mechanical watch. It actually regulates the timekeeping. And I'm using a screwdriver to pry the balance cock off very carefully. Um, it was pretty tight when I did this because there's actually three pins on the underside holding it onto the main plate. But regardless, it comes free and I'm just gently lifting it up. Um, that coiled spring you can see that connects the balance cock with the balance wheel is called the hair spring. It's one of the most delicate parts in a wristwatch. And so now I'm unscrewing the pallet fork cock, which holds the pallet fork in place. And this is the part that locks the gear train so that it doesn't just spin freely. So this is actually the same part in a clock that makes it go tick, tock, tick, tock. But in a watch, uh, it's more of a tick, 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 because it this watch actually ticks five times per second, which is pretty normal for a watch of this age. Uh, modern watches will usually tick at eight times per second. Uh, that's to say the balance wheel will oscillate at four hertz. And now I'm unscrewing the ratchet wheel as well as the crown wheel. And these are the gears that transfer the power from the crown into the mainspring, which powers the watch. And here, I'm actually using what's called rotico, that gray stuff on the end of the toothpick there. It's this sort of sticky putty, quite similar to sticky tack actually, and it's used by watchmakers to just remove oil or dust or to hold things in place temporarily. It's pretty useful.
And here I'm removing the click. And the click is actually the part that prevents the mainspring from unwinding after you wind it up. It's basically a ratchet system that only allows the ratchet wheel to go one direction. And here I'm just prying it off with a screwdriver. And underneath the click is actually the click spring, which is a tiny spring that really tends to fly off, which is why I'm holding it down with a toothpick. It's only about the width of a couple human hairs, so it's really easy to get lost. And as you can see as I hold it in the tweezers, yeah, it's pretty small and thin. And here I'm removing the gear train bridge. And this holds down the gear train, which is what transmits the power from the mainspring to the pallet fork. And there it goes, exposing the gear train, which consists of those gold-colored gears. And it's actually really dirty underneath. You can see a lot of gray residue, which is most likely dried up grease and oil. I'm sure it'll look completely different after I clean everything. And so first I'm removing the escapement wheel, followed by the third wheel, and then the fourth wheel, which actually has what's called an extended pivot, which means the pivot is unusually long, because the second hand at the six o'clock position to watch actually directly attaches to the pivot of this gear. And now I'm removing the barrel bridge. And underneath the barrel bridge, we'll actually find the mainspring barrel, which inside houses the actual mainspring. And so we'll see that in a second after I pry it off with a screwdriver. And you can see the mainspring barrel is that large gray gear looking thing. It's After I take it out, you'll see that it has a thickness to it. And that's because, like I said, inside of it is the coiled mainspring. And so now I'm going to take off the crown and stem again because I had to reinsert it in order to let down the mainspring. And so just unscrewing the setting lever screw until eventually the crown and stem should detach. Oh, there it goes. And it took with it two other gears, the uh, winding pinion and the sliding pinion. And that's the sliding pinion I'm holding in the tweezers right now. Some people also call it the castle gear. And you can see it's sticking to my tweezer because of all the old grease. And that was just the winding pinion I picked up. And so moving back to the watch movement, I'm going to continue to unscrew the setting lever. And bam! Part flies off. Uh, that was the setting lever itself. Um, and we're going to see in a second why it flew off. Thankfully, it didn't fly off the table. And so flipping it over, um, we see that part that's spring-loaded, that's the yoke, and because it's spring-loaded, it that's what launched the selling, setting lever off. I'm just pushing the uh, setting screw off, there it goes. Um, it's a pretty long screw. So going back, I'm actually using the same watch hand removing tool to remove what's called the cannon pinion. Um, and that's actually what the minute hand of the watch is directly attached to. And it's friction fit to what's called the center wheel, um, that gold wheel that I'm holding in the tweezers right now. Um, and like I said, it's just friction fit, um, so it's a friction clutch. And so moving back, I'm removing the cover plate for what's called the motion works. The motion works being just the collection of parts that forms the mechanism that allows you to set the hands of the watch. And so there goes the cover plate. There goes the intermediate setting gear, the minute wheel,
and that's the yoke I mentioned earlier, that long sort of lever looking part. And it has its own spring, which looks pretty similar to the click spring actually, except it's a bit thicker. But still definitely a part that you could really easily lose. There it is in the tweezers. And again, it's sticking to my tweezers because this watch is full of old grease. Actually way too much grease. I guess the previous watchmaker didn't really do that great of a job, because a watch movement should never be flooded with the amount of grease that I see. And so, the last part of the disassembly is actually disassembling the mainspring barrel. Like I said before, inside the barrel is actually the coiled mainspring, the part that powers the watch. Um, and at the center of this barrel is what's called the mainspring barrel arbor, which has a little hook on it, and that's actually what hooks onto the mainspring and turns, uh, subsequently winding up that spring from the center. There's the mainspring barrel cover, which is basically like a lid for the barrel. And yeah, looking inside that round part in the center is the barrel arbor, and you can see that coil of stuff inside, that's the mainspring. And the mainspring I'm going to remove right now. Unfortunately, um, it's a bit difficult to film, so it, it most of it happens out of frame. Um, here I'm just trying to gently... There we go, that's the mainspring being uncoiled. And you kind of go back and forth with your thumbs um, one after the other, and then the mainspring just uncoils by itself. And there it is completely removed. Um, there's the barrel, the barrel cover, and the mainspring itself, which is this big coiled spring. The end of the mainspring is actually curled in the other direction, so it's more of an S shape than a regular spiral, like circular shape. And that's actually to provide a bit of extra power at the end of the wind. And there's the barrel arbor removed, that tiny little roundish part right there that I just poked with my tweezers. And so that's the watch fully disassembled. Um, all the parts there on my workbench. And so now I'm going to clean all the parts and I'll resume filming uh, once I have everything cleaned and ready for reassembly. And so now we're going to start with the reassembly, starting with the mainspring. And I'm actually using a dedicated tool called a mainspring winder. Um, it's a pretty cool tool. It's a bit fiddly to use, but it's super important um, so that you install the mainspring back correctly. Some people will wind the mainspring back by hand, but that's bad practice in my books. And so the mainspring is now in the mainspring winder and it's ready for reinsertion back into the mainspring barrel. And it's actually pretty satisfying because it just sort of clicks into the mainspring barrel at the push of a button. And here I'm just preparing the reinsertion of the mainspring. Pushing that top bit, bam, it just goes in. And there it is all cleaned up. Um, if you compare it to the footage before, you'll notice that it is nice and new and shiny and clean now. Of course, um, there's a bit of grease in there just to help with reducing the friction. But other than that, it looks super shiny, which is exactly what we want. And there's the barrel cover, which is also equally nice and shiny. And so now with some finger cots on, I'm just reinserting the mainspring barrel arbor back into the mainspring barrel where it hooks onto the mainspring in the center. And so after getting the mainspring arbor back on, I can now put the cover back on and that's the mainspring barrel fully clean, reassembled and ready to be put back inside the watch movement. But actually, before we reinstall the mainspring barrel, I'm actually going to reassemble what's called the keyless works as well as the motion works. The keyless works being the parts that allow for you to wind the watch, and the motion works being the parts that allow you to set the time. 
And so in goes the winding pinion, followed by the sliding pinion. And these gears will engage with the stem and crown when winding the watch or setting the time. And now I'm reinserting the setting lever screw, which unfortunately is blocked by my fingers. And this is followed by the setting lever. And here I'm just using some Rotico on the end of the toothpick to hold the setting lever in place while I screw in the setting lever screw from the other side of the movement. Super useful stuff. Before reinserting the yoke, I'm just going to oil the post that it sits on. And the yoke actually engages with the sliding pinion, which of course engages with the stem. And so next is the yoke spring. And so now I'm oiling the post on which the intermediate setting wheel sits on. And there is the intermediate setting wheel going into its place. And here I'm just using that Rodico to clean off some excess oil. And now I'm oiling the post on which the minute wheel sits. And there's the minute wheel going onto that post. And this is followed by a cover plate, uh, which actually has a spring for the setting lever integrated into it. And this is held in place by two screws. And here I'm just checking the operation of it, making sure that all the gears turn the way that they should, uh, and that nothing's catching or anything. And so here I'm just oiling the end of that spring I mentioned on the cover plate that connects to the setting lever. And using some Rodico to clean off some excess grease. And then checking the operation of it. And finally, we can return to the uh, case back side of the movement uh, with the reinstallation of the mainspring barrel. And this is followed by the barrel bridge, um, screwing it back on with three screws. And so here you can actually already see I've reattached the center wheel, the gold color wheel you see right at the center of the movement. Um, here I'm actually reinstalling the fourth wheel, which actually directly connects to the second hand on the dial side of the movement. And then this is followed by the third wheel. Just setting it into place there. And finally, we will uh, reinsert the escapement wheel, which is the silver color wheel. And it's actually the, the escapement wheel has some specially shaped teeth that um, engages with the pallet fork. And there's the gear train bridge going back on. Um, this part's also kind of fiddly because you have to make sure that all the pivots on the top of the gears go into the holes on those jewels that you see. Um, and after they're in, you can check that they're seated properly because um, if you just gently push on the gears, it'll all spin freely um, and everything will be nice and smooth. And here I'm just uh, reinserting the screws for the gear train bridge. And again, I, as I'm doing this, I'm checking to make sure that the gears still spin freely. And so with that attached, I'm just oiling the post on which the click goes on. And so there goes the click. 
followed by the click spring. Again, this is the smallest spring in the watch, a um, couple of human hairs in width. And I'm just holding it down with the finger in case it wants to fly off. And so there it is, reinserted. Bit of a jump here, I've already reinserted the ratchet wheel, and here I'm just screwing the crown wheel back on. And on pretty much all watches, it actually uses a left-handed screw, which means it actually is lefty-tighty, righty-loosey. And here I'm just using some Rodico to clean up dust and dirt. And that's the palette for it going back in, which engages with the escapement wheel and the balance wheel on the other end, actually. Uh, and that's the palette for it cock. Pretty delicate procedure, because again, you have to make sure that the pivots on the palette fork go into the hole jewel. And here I'm just screwing down the pallet fork cock. And here I can check that it's seated properly because if I gently prod it on either side of the pallet fork, um, it will actually jump from one side to the other. And you can see the escapement wheel moving. And finally, we have the balance assembly, which includes the balance wheel, hairspring regulator, and balance cock, which is screwed down with a screw. Um, this is really the moment of truth when it comes to uh, reassembling a watch, because after the balance wheel goes in, it should immediately start ticking. It's a very suspenseful moment. Here I'm just trying to get that balance wheel into place. And hopefully once it drops into place, it should start running. Sometimes it needs a little shake from side to side, a bit of prodding. Oh, there we, there we go. It's running. Success. Just making sure that the balance cock is seated and then we can uh, reinsert the screw. And so at this stage, um, I would begin oiling the watch, um, oiling the jewels, uh, but I'm not gonna show that on camera because it's a really f delicate process. Um, it requires me getting right up to the watch movement with a loop or a magnifying glass, so um, I won't be showing that in the video. And so here are the last couple of steps. I just put the hour wheel back on, which is what the hour hand directly connects to, and I'm reinserting the dial, which is secured by two screws on the edge of the movement, 180 degrees apart from each other. Um, they're the dial screws. And with the dial back on, we can go ahead and reinsert the seconds hand, followed by the hour hand, and finally the minute hand, making sure that when the hour hand points to one of the numbers on the dial, that the minute hand points exactly at 12. Basically making sure that the hour and minute hands uh, align. And so before I put the watch movement back into the case, I actually have to remove the stem and crown. And so with the stem and crown removed, I can put the case back on. And then flip it back over and then reinsert the stem and crown. Actually, before I do that, I'm going to lubricate what's called the crown tube with some silicone grease, and that just helps with making sure that the watch is a bit more waterproof. 
Of course, you never actually go swimming with a vintage watch like this, but it should help for when it rains and you get caught outside, or even just hand washing. And so reinserting the stem and crown back into the movement now that it's all cased up. And here I'm screwing the setting lever screw down so that the setting lever can hold down the stem and crown and stop it from being pulled all the way out when I pull out the crown to set the time. Just using some Rodico here again to lift off a bit of dust. And this is followed by the movement spacer ring. And here's the watch movement up close. Um, you can see the bounce wheel spinning freely and the hairspring, that coiled thin spring uh, expanding and contracting as the bounce wheel oscillates. And if you look carefully, that small silver wheel um, ticking long, that's the escapement wheel. And then you can just about see the pallet fork lever between the balance wheel and the escapement wheel going back and forth. Uh, and here's the ratchet and crown wheel, um, those two big gears. And so with the watch ticking really nicely, uh, we can go ahead and screw the case back back on. Here I'm just using my fingers to screw it back on and then I'm gonna further tighten it down using the case back wrench. And that concludes the mechanical overhaul of the watch. Here I'm just spinning the hands around, making sure that they turn freely and making sure that it aligns perfectly. And here it is on my wrist um, on a black leather strap. The case actually polished up really well um, and the dial has a nice patina to it. So I'm really happy with how it turned out. Um, seems to keep really good time uh, and it really didn't cost me much. So yeah, I'm pretty chuffed. And so that's the video. Hope you enjoyed or maybe just learned something new about watchmaking and yeah, see ya.